There you go, you're a late starter. Meant to be in here before we start, now the people are wondering why I'm late. Anyway, that's Bob. Hang on, my camera's out of whack. I've got, he's got the hump now, he's sitting down on his bed. Aren't ya? You? You're a good boy, really. That's it, on my bed, waiting for me breakfast. G'day, how is everyone? You know, I've just got to have a look at that because that camera's come down a little bit. Oh, talk about panic stations. Going to do this, going to do that, and everything runs behind time. Then I look up, it's half past nine here. Oh, dear. Here we go. What's that going to do? Uh, it's going to be close. I'll come down that way. Up there. Here we go. No, that's not right either. Oh, I think, I think that's it. I think that should be pretty, pretty close to being it. That's better because I was cutting the top of my head off before. So hang on, I've got to change glasses now because I can't read the chat. Oh. Dear, we had some rain last night, flooded all my sheds. Not happy, Jan. Can't read the chat even more now. Hang on. I must have my different glasses on. I do too, I think. G'day, Ray. How are you, mate? G'day, Tango. Welcome. Oh, all right. Totally disorganised as usual. I haven't even started my breakfast. So I'm going to have to wash that down my neck in a minute. What I want to do today is I've got a, a woodworking show I'm doing demonstrations at and I thought I need the practice so I'm going to play around on the scroll saw. Might, might get a bit of um, carving done. Just got these chisels sent up from, um, 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 see I haven't even got all the cameras done. From records, so I'm using those. Normally I use file chisels, but record wanted me to use these, so I'll give these a bit of a run, and we'll see how they go, which I'm excited about. So I thought instead of demonstrating, like most people just demonstrate techniques, I thought I would actually make some stuff that I've got to have at home. And that way I'm killing two birds with one stone. I'm, I'm doing some demonstrating, but I'm also doing something that's worthwhile. Oh, hang on, I've got to send Alan a message. Alan, the answer is yes, if you're watching. Um, where's my phone gone? Here it is. Oh, I got a new jointer the other day. Hey, Pascal, just check. Oh, uh, oh, there we go. I've just got to send a text to me, pest guy. There we go, there's one. Had my two boys up on the weekends. It's the first time I've had all my boys together for 11 years. So I, I'm, I'm all discombobulated. We just dropped them off at the airport last night and it's been a great last couple of days. Ah. Oh. Look, like Avoshis, let's cut wood bits off, not the top of your head. Well, people, unkind people would argue that that's made of wood anyway, so it doesn't matter. Hey, Alexandru, thank you. Good to see you. Good to have you on board. I'm just catching up on my correspondence here. I know I shouldn't have done earlier. There we go. All right, that's all done. So, what else have we got? Nothing. Not expecting any calls. So we'll turn... Oh, just in case Theo rings. You never know. He does sometimes. There you go. Theo's at this wood show too. We're doing not together. We're at the same show, but different stands. Now, what I want to do, amongst other things, 
is some double-edged marquetry, which I have not done for years. So I want to get back into doing that because it's a great, great um, way of doing boxes up or doing things that are a little bit different. And there's absolutely no gap. Oh, I'll leave those because I'll need those in a tick. You know, normally when you do marquetry, or I don't know if you do, but when you do marquetry, normally there's very fine gaps where the knife blade's been going into it. But with double bevel, there is zero, zero um, gap, which is good. I'm looking for my angle finder and I can't find it, so I'm going to have to... Oh, it could be out in the truck. I'll have to go out to the truck in a minute. It's just outside. Record, record carving chisel, uh, mallet too, which is good. Uh, zombie stream, that's it, mate. That's it. Wolfie, evening, good to see you. Didn't get caught texting while streaming. Well, I shouldn't, should I? I'm sure, I'm sure there'd be a law against it if they thought about it. Mungles. <laughs> Honestly, what can you do nowadays? You don't need a license, a permit, a permission, or a special area to do it in. My goodness, how we ever survived. Uh, all right, now, is this turned on? Oh, I don't, oh, it is. Well, that's a good, that's a good start. Okay, I'll put that there for the moment. Oh, wait a minute, that's all caught up in that. Oh. So if we drop that down there and put that into there, that's going to be fine. We can do that in a little bit. Bring that down there. I'm starting to get organised. Look at that. Yeah, I want to um, practice a bit of carving patterns as well, so we can do that. Don't need that. Shed is still reasonably tidy. I wouldn't say it was absolutely pristine, but it is tidy. Um, yeah, these are the, I've been wanting to do this one for years. So I might do, ooh. I don't know. Have a go at that one. This one is it's a silhouette of a piano player. And I might just play with that. That could be alright to do. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. I actually I'm I'm starting to think. I need a double bevel on the circle, then inlay that, and then we cut this out over the top. All right, we'll have a look at that. It's not for a box or anything like that. It's just practice. It's something I've wanted to do for a while. And then I want to do another one of these pateras. I'll do it from scratch. It's out of this book here, which I highly recommend if you want to get into doing marketry. It's a brilliant book. And it's got a lot of different um, designs that you can copy and take out the back and use on different projects you've got. So it really is. I don't do marquetry solely the way this guy these guys talk about it, but I do do it a lot like they talk about. Okay. Oh I'll show you that box. Here's the box with the, remember we put these bits on because I sanded through. It has come up really, really nice. So there you go. It's something different, three dimensional, and you can actually feel it. You can see it sticking over the top, but it's flush here at the bottom and the sides, there and there, but then it's sitting proud at the top. Actually, what I might do first is I'll, glue that will uh, veneer this part up, which I did last week, but at least then it's going to be done, so I'll just turn on the glue pot. It's, mostly, it's starting to get a bit of a pong about it, so I don't know if it's starting to go off or not. We'll find out soon enough when it hits critical temperature. 
Ah. Oh. Reginald Wood Expressions, hello from South Carolina. Well, hello to you too, sir. G'day, Dr. Crazy from Germany. Damn, I've got no notification about this, Jess. Happy to see it. Tell you what, Dr. Crazy, I've got no notification about it either. I just got out of bed and found myself down here. That's why I'm running late and sound as if I'm confused, because I am. Chevrolet Diesel, g'day. How are you? Lovely to have you back. Uh, my day is chaotic. Whilst I'm waiting for all that to heat up, I might just draw this patera and we'll just trace it. Just use a pencil. Um, let me see if I can get it all on camera. There and this one can go. There. All right, so just a normal piece of paper. Get that book wherever it be. Didn't even go near a router this weekend, this week. I thought I was going to, but I escaped. I escaped it. All right, piece of paper over the top and just draw it in. It doesn't matter about the oval that's there so much. Uh, but we do have to get the leaves in. And you can be as precise or as rough as you like. Because basically the uh, saw is going to change what you do a little bit. Unless you're super, super um, accurate with your cuts, is what I meant to say. And by doing it like this, each one's going to be slightly different anyway. As I said before, you actually make two when you're just making the one. Because you do a negative of the one you want, so you actually end up with two. Just make sure you get the lo all the lines in. Or if you want, I mean, you can just change it. You just take this as a template and then you just cut the leaves to whatever you want and then it can just be inspiration for you that one. Oh, no. oh, I thought I made a mistake, but I was mistaken.
This could be a very quiet stream. See, changing the shape already. Okay. Oh, I reckon that looks pretty all right. This one I've gone too far, so I'm just going to have to cut that one back. Just, it just didn't look right, that. How far up does it go? All right. Then if you want, you can draw that circle in the middle. It really doesn't make too much difference. And I've gone a little bit too far here too. So that one can go up to there. That can come down to there. All right, so that's basically there. So now we're going to glue that onto a piece of veneer and we'll work out which way we want to go. Oh. I'm using paperback at the moment. Uh, the only reason is I, I was too busy and I didn't get time to lay up anything else. Um, what you can do, and what I would normally do, if I'm not using paperback, I actually would use ordinary veneer and then glue newspaper onto the front. I have seen people do it on the back, but I would prefer to do it on the front. And <clears throat> what you then do is you, in effect, have paper veneer. So you've got a sheet of veneer with newspaper on the top of it. So when you're cutting, your fibers are gonna to stand together and then you put it all together. And then when you actually finally finish, put the job on the job, the job on the job, then you take all the newspaper off and your designs underneath. The reason I don't like doing it on the back is, look, you can, you can glue it straight down in a job and it might be fine, but I like to have timber to timber, not uh, an interface in between. So that's the reason for that. Now, actually, we're going to have two, aren't we? Oh, let's have a look, see what have we got here. No, it's pretty bland. Yeah. Actually, that might not look too bad. Not a huge contrast, but there is a contrast. Oh, I tell you what would look nice if I've got some. We might do the same timber, only different colour. Let me see if I can find a darker bit of... I'm lost here. Normally I can get up here and move around. Oh, this is going to be expensive. Uh, 
if it all falls down. No, that's all right. Clunk, bang. Oh, look, I don't know. Oh, I just don't know. I know I've got some really dark stuff, but this is all just, all for the practice. No, it's too close, too close. That's too close. I did have some real dark stuff, but all my step ladders have gone because I, oh, it doesn't matter, we'll just, we'll use this and that. That'll do. Yeah, that'll look all right. Um, all my step ladders I've taken out because I had to get rid of the jointer that I sold yesterday so I could get my new jointer in but everything's been moved and so what I normally stand on I can't okay let's cut a bit of this up Whoops. We've got to do that. That's what we'll do with that in a minute. I've got this one. I've got this one. I want two bits of veneer to go over the top and bottom of that. We shall use this stuff. That'll do. onto one of these pieces, so we'll do that now too. Oh, I did, I did. Oh, crikey. I bought some paper glue the other day, so I could use it. Ah, oh, there it is. Look at that, I've got it, I've actually got it. Paper glue. We'll see how it goes. What? Well, get I in. Yeah, Sue's up in the house. Bob's here though. Um, ow! Just stabbed myself. Hope you are well and enjoying your scrolls. Like, mate, this is this, this is only the second time I've used it. I haven't used it since the last stream. We've had a lot of things going on in the house and the home, and um, this is my first time, and I've got a a woodworking show that I'm meant to be demonstrating it at on Friday. So I've, I've got to get some practice in. Okay. All right, so I've just glued that onto the top of that. And then we will sandwich that, that, and that together. And we'll put that on the back. Like that. And get a stapler, and we'll staple it all together. Actually, I might even cut that down a bit. <whistles> Dr. Crazy, you got a question? I just seen it. What was it? Steve, I have a question. As a beginner in box making, 
Making special in dovetail shrap. Should I train with cheap pa No! Definitely not! In good wood, special stuff. Um, like, if, if I'd, go, I'd go beach. And, yeah, oak's a bit hard. But you want success every time you do something. So if you're using crappy pallet wood, you don't know what it is, and I can guarantee it won't be dry, you're going to get disheartened very quickly. Whereas if you use good wood, then, I like that, then uh, it's going to encourage you to do more. So yes, definitely good wood, I would, Dr. Crazy. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the design on the top, underneath, under, oh look at that, that's going to rip me shorts off, or will it? Might, just, I'll just, just might do that, this one here again, because I've got a join in there, which I didn't want, so I'll just do that again. Okay, bear with me. We'll just cut this again. And look, honestly, I, I have done dovetails in boxes, but they don't really serve any purpose. And unless it's, you want to, you know, show that you've got a skill. I think there's better ways to join boxes than um, dovetails. And I'm not, I'm not a fan of the box joint either. I think they're ugly looking things. They're a machine made joint. Ow! Oh. Okay. Now that's gonna be that's what I want. I'll just take this staple out of here. And we will staple this together. Try not to put a staple where you're going to be cutting your oval out. Because you don't want to have holes in your background. And that's it there. See if we can find the right oval for it. Going on previous searches for things, I doubt if we will. It's that one, but I don't know where the clear one is. But that doesn't matter, because we won't get that far today. Okay, so that is basically it. I was, I was, I was looking at myself on YouTube, which was ridiculous because I wasn't where I should have been. There we go. I'm back now. Debbie, good day. How are you? Oh, look, my day is complete. John, my, you've made my day as well. Um, there we go. Where are we up to? Evening from Portugal today, Jose. Lovely to have you along. Uh, they are. They were first on too, John. They were first up. They were as keen as mustard. What can I tell you? In Germany, we call that Gutenberg, which copy anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. Um... Frank, hello, how are you? Richard, Joycey, I'm back. How's it going, Steve? What have I missed over the last few... Mate, don't ask me. I don't know what I... Do. 
I was going to say I don't know what I had for breakfast, but that's true because I haven't eaten it yet. I've got to get something into me in a minute or the boss will be down going crook at me. Okay, so we'll cut that one out in a minute. And I want to do a double bevel on that one there, which you can't see because I haven't pressed the button. There you go. So I've just got to work out how to do that. Um... Because I don't know. Oh, I think I do. Yeah, no, I know what I'll do. Um, and again, I might just use those timbers I've got there because I haven't got anything prepped. But we'll do that. I've got to go and get my angle thing because it has to be set when you're doing... Well, I don't know about other people, but when I'm doing double bevel edged marquetry I set mine to 13 and a half degrees that's the table 13 and a half degrees and I have to reacquaint myself with it because if you go one way you can make a complete mess of it but if you go the other way it'll work so let's get this thing done for those of you that just come in what we did yes last week after another mistake that I had this is called the mistake box that's how it's come up with that extra layer of veneer we put on to cover up me where I sanded through here. But it's level with the edges here and then it's prominent on the side of the box. And I tell you what, it looks pretty special. I haven't put any, I'm sure if I can find some DAA, I'll splash a bit on there so we can see what it's going to look like when it gets colour into it. I haven't got any. Where's my DAA gone? Bob, have you drunk it? Oh, here it is. Here we go. Here we go. That should come to life quite nicely. There you go. Comes up nicely, doesn't it? So, so much so that... I'm going to do a box on purpose using that technique. And I think I'm going to do a serpentine box. One that's got a lid like that, which I did have one around here somewhere. But that's the plan. I was talking to one of my suppliers during the week. The... Um, people I get ebony from and I said I'd do an ebony box and they were pretty excited about that so I thought I reckon it'll look really nice ebony and amboynia together and I, oh I've got some gorgeous timber coming this is this is a sample piece of it and uh, it just says he hopefully if I can find it again Oh, here we go. Look at this. Look at this. this. This, I kid you not, is just extraordinary. <laughs> Look at that. The whole lot is just like that. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks I'll have that and I can start cutting it up to box bits. And if I'm uh, working out all right, I might even put some online and you can buy some. It's New Guinea Rosewood Beeswing, which I don't know if it's rare, but I, I've only seen it occasionally. And there was one tree that they took down and the whole tree, massive tree, was like that. So I went through, I don't know how many metres of, cubic metres of timber and pulled all the, they're all five inch by five inch sections, about six metres long, and I pulled all of them. I said, I'll have all of those. So it's going to be 
very nice when they arrive. We'll have to tie them a timber, sh timber shed up so I can have a nice place for them. Here we go. Okay, what are we up to? Um, Brad's workshop. G'day from down under of the west, Texas. Oh, there you go. See, different down under to us. Uh, Hepburn in the house. Well, howdy. Lovely to have you back. I do one with rebates like you, but... Oh, this is Dr. Crazy. I do one with rebates like you, but... Whenever I try to chisel the dovetail out the uh, pallet wood, softwood, it breaks out. Sharper chisels and come from both ends. Maybe I'll try better wood next time. Yeah, look, if you come from both ends, it's going to be easier for you. And if you're using better timber, it's going to be easier for you. And sharp chisels. That's the key. Um, accurate marking on the, the dovetails isn't as important as accurate marking on the pins. If, oh, wouldn't that rot your socks? Unless you do pins first. I do dovetails first. There is no rhyme or reason. That was the way I was taught, and that's just the way it sort of transpired for me. Piece of this. Okay. How's that going? Needs a bit of water in there, I think. I don't think I'm going to get around eating my breakfast, so I'm going to... I might, might get a quick mouthful and then I'm going to stick it in the fridge. Mm. There we go. In the fridge. And I was right... That glue's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna go soon. It's starting to pen and ink a bit. I'll leave that there for a bit longer. All right, cut the 45s. And what I'm doing at the moment is we're just gonna put the corners on the um, box. I hate it when, <laughs> I hate that when you're just about to cut something and you sneeze. You can end up with a chisel up your schnoz. Ah, oh, I'm working my way down. Ah. Oh, don't worry about the English. Your English is better than my German, Dr. Crazy. Yeah, Richard, how are you? Easy rider as I'm from Twitch. So, welcome, thanks for coming over. Uh, Dad, thought that veneer in the corner was a big scar for Bob. Yeah, no. He, don't, he doesn't like chewing there. If I, put, if I put glue on it, he'll eat it. Let me go back here. Howdy from Texas. Hand plane to spray. Oh, good on you. In my third floor apartment today, always room for woodwork. There is, look, I'm so sad. That didn't take off because I thought it was such a great idea. And I went over. For those of you that don't know, oh, I had another channel called Room for Woodwork where I had a woodworking bench and everything set up in the corner of the bedroom. And that was awesome. And my, um, two of my sons were up here, so I had all together um, on the weekend. And I went through and showed in the cooking classes. <laughs> That Sue and I did in there. And yeah, it's sad it didn't take off. But it's nice to know that people, it had, it's left a legacy there, Joel. There was a, who was it? 
Hey, Joel, Norse did not left the legacy. Ah, oh. does it, does it, does it uh, does a lot of wood get, yes, yeah, there's a fair amount. Um, right up in the highlands. Well, when I say a fair amount, on a world scale, no, I don't think there's a fair amount, but on my scale, yeah, there's a fair amount. Oh. Oh, good and appetite, mate, I'd like to have the good and time to eat it. But I, it doesn't matter what time I start, I, I'm a, oh, hey, Sunday, I had breakfast at three o'clock on Sunday. As I got up, got in and did some stuff, did this, did that, started to feel a bit hungry, so I went and had a coffee. And then I came back, did something else, did something else. Oh, I haven't had breakfast yet. And my grandson, Anthony, he just laughs at me because I, I tell him I can't have lunch until I have breakfast. So I always have a bowl of cereal before I have lunch. Let's see how this is going to go. Oh. I think, Deb, those knives I was talking about, I think, I think I've had a win. I had to pay an extra 60 pounds postage, which I reckon is a little bit over the top. But I have, and I did say, if you can't send them, give me a refund. But I haven't heard back, so I'm presuming, assuming, hoping that there is light at the end of the tunnel and I will get those knives that I want. I've just had so much trouble trying to get these particular knives. You can't get them in Australia. And I think they're discontinued as well, which makes it even harder to get. But I found a supplier in England that I hope can fix me up. That would be good. Uh, hello from Romania, Daniel. Uh, I, I, I'd love to post them again. We made pancakes and we made an apple pie and I cut the apple, I, I peeled the apples with a spoke shave and I cut them up with an axe. And then when we made pancakes, I broke the eggs with a hammer and a chisel and oh, we had a ball. But it didn't take off. Um, I like room for woodwork, but you do nothing there. No, it's all being pulled apart now. The, um, that particular bench I was using is now in the classroom um, in another shed. And it's also the, the bench that I'll be using at the woodworking show. And everything else has been, yeah, pulled down, which is, as I said, a pity. But that's progress for you, I'm supposing. I'm just going to... See how we go here. No, that's 15 by the, that's all you need, Richard. Just enough space to swing a hammer, mate. That's it. All good after that. My first, my first workshop, actually my first workshop was so small, you literally couldn't have swung a cat in it. It, I reckon, it would have been um, maybe four foot wide, 1.2 metres wide. This isn't going to work, why isn't this going to work? And, oh, maybe eight foot. No, hang on, wait a minute. Yeah, maybe seven or eight foot long and four foot wide was my first workshop. It was a little, it was meant to be to store the lawnmower in next to the laundry. But I made some stuff in that. It wasn't very good stuff. 
And the next one was um, in a house that we bought. It was a makeshift sort of shed. Had window holes, but no windows. And no door. I had doorway, but no door. And boy, I'll tell you what, I put some work out there. All right, how's this looking? And then we moved to a very small country town and I had a purpose-built workshop made for me there. And then another house, I converted a wine cellar. And then I started renting sheds. And then this place, when we bought this, wonderful, I had all these sheds on there. Okay. Check out Steve's bench. In, oh, yeah. Yeah, well, that's... That's student one. Oh, it's all done up with h and Gordon Vices and everything. It's lovely now. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. That's the one in the shed. <laughs> Four by eight prison cell. It depends. If you haven't got woodworking gear in there, it could well be. But if you've got a bench and a couple of planes, it doesn't have to be. Yeah, I'd go out quite regularly, um, Hepburn, and get my own timber. Um, if I've got any... Blah, 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 blah. Oh, I think this one is. Hang on, I'll have a look. You right, Bob? Oh. Was it or wasn't it? Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh. You can't, can't see much of it because there's not much of it there, but that stuff around the edge, that's called beef wood. That's, um, I've got a lot of that out in the yard. And I'll go ahead and collect that. Um, yeah, this one, this one, there you go. I've got them everywhere. That we got, that's Bo Yakka. Um, that was made by Terry Gordon. Terry comes out with us, or I go out with Terry, whatever. Whichever way you want to look at it, I think I've just knocked myself out of the picture there. No, there I am. Um, what else have I got here that I've collected? I don't know. No, there's a lot outside. But I, I miss it. I haven't been out for about three months because it's been so ridiculously hot. And I've been busy. But I'm, I'm hoping to get another trip in maybe April would be nice. I might just cut these back a little bit. Yeah, it's just nice to get away. And I enjoy getting on the end of a chainsaw as well. Whoops. Something special about being in the bush, away from civilization, with six chainsaws going. That's good. So I've been out with Theo a couple of times too. A lot of the um, bowls and bits that he's turning at the moment is stuff that we've actually got ourselves. I should stop talking while I'm doing this because I just, I didn't completely mess up, but I did a little bit, but it doesn't matter. As I've said before, you, when you're cutting these, make sure you cut them longer 
that way, a oh, wider, sorry, that way uh, you've got a bit to play with and you can manipulate it if you wish. Should work. Uh, blah, 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 blah. What do I want? Just get a platen. Oh, Bob's there licking his feet. He's <laughs> got nothing else to eat. Poor fella. Take this one down. Okie dokie. That down so I don't make a mess all over the place, which I'm prone to do. And here we go. Now, because I marked that before, the pencil side is on the downside, so I don't have to work that out. That glue is a bit niffy, I tell you. Little niffy. And where's the last bit here? Some on the edge. I'm not too worried if any of it goes on the inside. Number one, I can sand it off and number two I'm going to line the box anyway so it doesn't really matter that much push these in so we get the corners on As I showed you last week, if you don't have a veneer hammer for very thin bits like this, just use the end of a cross peen hammer. It does exactly the same job. Holds it in nice and tight. Ah, oh, thanks for the bobs, John. You're famous, Bob. You don't care, do you? Providing you get five, fed five times a day with snacks in between, you're happy. And the lucky last. There 
There we go. There it is. Now we'll just turn it upside down. So I've got a clean bit of paper, I think. Plonk it down like that. over the top and oh, if I can get this clamp that right in the middle like that and that will hold that until it's dry okay one job out of the way. Now let's get on this patera and we'll see how we go. Um, do, 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 do. Last time Steve cut his lumber out of a branch with his bandsaw. Did I? I can't remember that. Well, there you go. Oh, well, yeah. You, you'll be able to fit everything into my workshop with a 56 inch screen. Tango and Easy Rider, the gang's all here. That's it. Bonza Boomerang, you see? Now I've got to learn all your names again, Jerry. Uh, what form does high glue come in? This form, my dear. Just like that. Whoop. So it's, it's pellet form or pearls and then you just melt it with water and away it goes. There is um, some ready made mixed stuff. I can't comment on it because I've never used it but I can comment on this stuff because I've used it for, oh, I don't know. I'm just trying to think. Um, I've been using it for over 20 years, I think. I love it. I still have you know, different PVAs and that that I sometimes use for various other jobs. Uh, I've never seen it in flakes, John. I've, I've only ever seen it in pearl, but there you go. I wonder if still still the... Oh, look, I'm sure... Where's Ray? Ray know where it was. He'll put it up. Oh. For those of you that are kind enough not to mention it, all the music stand, what happened was, I'm trying to see if I've got another, I've got another glue pot here, but I, I think it might be, no, it's up in one of the other sheds. What happened was, when glue, the glue dries and goes, um, back to it, well it doesn't go to a, a solid, it goes to a gelatinous form. It's just like a big strong bit of silicon. And I had some in there and it had all orange sawdust on the top. And I was doing a live stream on Twitch and I picked it up like so, went over the camera, I said, oh look, that's how long since I've used it, it's got all that sawdust on it. And it was this orangey coloured sawdust. So then I grabbed hold of my compressed air. I said, I'll just blow that out. Much to the amusement and my chagrin, it wasn't sawdust at all. It was actually mould. And the glue had putrefied, putrefied, putrefied. When I hit it with the compressed air, of course, it just blew up in the face. I had a couple of dry reaches. It was all over my apron. Oh, it was rancid. It was wrong. 
And Bob is in his element. He just thought it was Christmas and he's around licking it all off the floor. Oh, it was just wrong. Was Theo with us that day? I can't remember. Um, yeah, just dissolving in water. I'll show you how to do it, Deb. Hang on, wait a minute, wait a minute, because I'm going to have to make a new lot up very soon because I can tell that one stinks. Let me get a container. Jeez, I don't know. Oop. All right, are you watching? Are you watching? Because, cause. Okay, ordinary container, you can use anything. I don't like using plastic ones because they're easier to use. Oh, no, I might even move this one around. Here you go. Here you go. All right. Blue container. Water. Oh, and, and, and pencil. Got to have a pencil. We well, don't got to have the pencil, but I always use a pencil. So whatever container you're using, you pour. Pearls into that. Shake it down so it's nice and level. Add some water. Till it just covers it. Then get a pencil and poke it around that just makes sure that all the beads get wet. And that's it. We'll leave it aside for 25 minutes or so while I'm doing something else. And then I'll show you what it looks like. But that's all it takes to mix it. Nothing hard at all. All easy peasy. Did that help? I'm, I'm, I'm pleased if I can help. Oh, you're sad. You're a sad girl, Deb. It was disgusting. Oh, it was. God, stank. <laughs> uh, what's that one? Left screen your stream, right? Screams a lot of oh, good again. Yeah. Well, there you go. So I get paid for showing your stream. Oh, you go for it. I want five percent. I'm not greedy. <laughs> well, you can tell I wasn't scripted, can't you? Oh dear, oh dear. Oh, have you found it? <laughs> uh, William! Oh, hey, Billy! How are you, mate? Kicking back? Cigar in one hand, bourbon in the other? That's it. You got style. You got style. Your cabinet's over there, too. I'll, I'll show you the door. Oh, no, I can show you the... Yeah, here's the moulding for it. There you go. Look at that. That's that's a handmade moulding that's gonna go on it. I just gotta get around to doing it, but I keep on getting sidetracked. It's terrible. It's all good though. Bob thinks his throat's cut because I haven't had breakfast yet. Look at him. Hey, what's up, Bimbo? Hmm? What? Did you hear your name mentioned? Food. I haven't got, even even got an eye on He's lost interest. No, that's it. Blow ya. All right. Um, 
All right, now, what I was going to do. All right, let's get into this Patra thing. Out. Hang on, hang on, hang on, Billy. I'll see if I can get this camera over there. There you go. That's it. You just shut this door. There's the door frame for it. There's the top and bottom shelves. The other shelves are in behind it. So, and that's all been dovetailed. It's all ready to rock and roll. Just waiting for you to go and do something now, Bob. What's the matter, mate? Hey, it's, just, it's not your regular routine, is it? We got up too early. <laughs> we didn't, actually. We got up late. It's most likely why I'm running late. Okay, let's have a go at this Patera. Uh, Patra. I don't know, call it what you like. This, this is what I'm going to make, and I'll show you how to make it. That's it there. So that's, that's the drawing, and that's what it's going to end up like. No, it won't be those colours because I'm using different, different um, stuff. Different coloured veneers. Let me put this back up here. Breakfast just finished. Oh, that's breakfast. Is it a cigar and a, <laughs> and a bourbon? Oh, good on you. Did I say breakfast? Oh, I didn't mean that. Uh, are you having a shot of me, TB, <laughs> TD? But right, I'm waiting for you to come over and cut some dovetails for me. <laughs> All right. Here we go. <laughs> Hang on, because I haven't cut one of these for years. Oh, no, that's not true. I have cut one. Um, I haven't used this machine before, cutting one of these. So we'll just see how it goes. All right. Oh. Uh, I might go all cams. How will that be? Which one's that one? That one there? No, that one. Oh, that one hasn't got much chop going for it. Um, where can I put that one? There you go. You can get to see all the angles now. Um, I won't have that up. And, oh, big problem. I, I haven't got... There's ants in there. Blast of ants in there. I haven't got a zero plate. So I don't know if that's going to create an issue. Yes, it will create an issue. All right, wait a minute. Let's just deviate off. Now, I will demonstrate how to make a zero plate for a scroll saw. Um, what do I need? I've got to know how thick it is. Three mil. Let me go and find a bit of three mil material. Oh, a bit of MDF will do. Yeah, it should be three mil. Should be. Is he hopefully? Where is where's the MDF bolt? Come on, where is it? Oh, I know you had it. Where'd you put it? Yeah, play I spy for a lip a little bit. I'll be back. I've just got to find some three mil stuff. That's not it. That. No, that's not it either. That's not it. Oh no, come on. Three mil.
I saw any of I just bit this off with my teeth, you can tell. Uh, who won I spy? Okay. That's gonna be pretty darn close. This is going to be clever because we can use the scroll saw to make the zero tolerance for itself. All right, which I can't find a jigsaw either. Oh, it's going to be nice when all my sheds are set up properly. Now, I bet you can't find that other. Have I got any pin blades? I'd love to have a pin blade right about now. It would save me so much time. But maybe that's not meant to happen. teach me. Where's Deb? Here you go. It's not ready to come out yet, but that's the glue that we just put the water in. See how it's we're getting all gooey. We'll leave it for a bit longer. And then it'll be easy enough to take out. Oh. Gee, it would have been nice if I had that pin blade. I could have done something. Anyway, all right. 
I just hope this blade doesn't break because it very fine work that we're doing. But anyway, all right, let's go. We're going to find this thing now. Ba -da -bum, ba -da -bum. Okay, Loki. See how it goes. Bearing in mind this bit I'm using here, I think it's 0.027 of an inch this blade. It's very, very thin. So you don't want to push it too hard. Well that's no good, you're looking at the back end of the machine there, is there? There you go. With this, I might just use that. That, I got all that cleaning the gutters out the other day. You had a torrential downpour. And um, I had to clean the gutters in a hurry. I'm just wondering if I can get a better shot for you. No, don't think so. I think that's about the best we're going to do. The reason I have to make a zero plate is because the pieces that I am cutting out are going to be so small, some of them can quite easily drop between the holes that are there. Okie Now it's good. Actually, I'm going to come out. I'll go over to the bandsaw and just cut these holes. I'll give you. I'll give you that shot.
couple of little holes out like that. All I'm doing with that is just nibbling away at it. This is going to fit. See how close we are. Nothing like having to do things on the run. Just got to take a little bit off. We'll go over the bobbin sand and do that. I don't care if it's too small because we've got enough to play with but it can't be too big because it won't go in if it's too big. That is very, 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 very close. Oh, 
might have to cut the um, recesses a bit deeper again. But that's easy peasily done. Ah, oh, look at that. Might not even have to do that. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. We have had a win. Okay, look at that, fits in there nicely. Now what I've got to do is, I was trying to work out, there was an easier, easier way of putting this on. Oh, there is. Maybe. I'm going to make sure I've got the blade facing the right way. That's it. There we go. And pop that on there. Bit of a tighten. That'll do. Now what I've got to do is come right in on a straight line and see if we can cut it. Going offline a bit. All right, way offline. I'm not going to have any pieces smaller than this, I don't think. So we'll just... There we go. I reckon. That'll do. It's a bit above zero, but it's close enough for what I need. So now the small bits that I cut won't drop in there. That's the deal anyway. All right, uh, let me have a catch up on some chat. Where are we? You do need a cam from the top. I'll, I'll organise that, but I haven't got one at the moment. Yeah, see you, Billy. All the best, mate. Ants. Yeah, I don't know what ants were doing in there. Mm. 
Hey, Brian, you're all right. I've still got an hour to go, mate. It's been chaotic here. <clears throat> now, that might be why they gave it to me because it had ants happen. You never saw, you never know. Why don't you get sanding belts for the scrolls? No, I've got too much stuff already. <clears throat> Paint one end with a white dot so you know which way is up on the scroll saw blade. And that's a good idea, but have you seen how small my scroll saw blades are? <laughs> okay, let's go. <clears throat> now what, actually I'll just hammer these down so they don't get caught. So it's all nice and flat. Uh, what I normally do, if, if we get around to doing double edge, that's the drill I use. As you can see, it's very, very, very small. It's a number 70, but with these, it really doesn't matter what size hole you cut because you're going to knock out the island in the middle. And this is one of the great... Um, Things about this, you only have one entry cut, one bit of piercing, and once you've done that, the rest of it all comes by itself. So I'll just poke this out. I might have been cutting with this. Oh, leather. Okay, so all I'm going to do is just punch a hole straight through that. That's all I need. And what I will do is get rid of that so I've got a clean wad punch later on. got to thread this through once so we'll do that and if you're in luck you'll only need one blade for the whole job if we're not in luck we might need two blades the blade through. Lock it up. Doesn't matter <clears throat> what machine you're using, you're going to have this drama. If 
once it's done, you don't have to worry about doing it again. You've got to make sure the blade, especially on this one, doesn't go all the way through that holder or one clip on the holder. But that seems as if it's about right. <coughs> And there we go. Clipped onto the bottom one. I'll just stick my finger in there and make sure. Appears to be. Put a bit of tension on it. Okay. Now, he does say in the book, which is always good to refer to, Find it, if I can find it. First cut out the petals. Next cut the tiny tips that separate the petals. So the first thing we're going to do is cut out these petals here and then we leave these little bits at the top and we cut them out last okay so here goes nothing <clears throat> from what I'm I'm gathering from that we cut the petal then we cut this and then we move on to the next one so let's give it a go well do I have to have a chat let me see if I have a chat first uh, record was waiting in anticipation. For this. Yeah, I reckon they are too. I, I don't know how we'll go. We might have to post a different one, but we'll see how this one turns out. Yeah, I wonder if I've got a smaller. Wait a minute. Let me just see how smaller I can make this, and I might be able to put this on the table. So then you can have overhead cam. So I've got a GoPro, but unfortunately the GoPro won't. Um, yeah, the GoPro won't uh, work with Wi-Fi because I've already got too many things on there. How about that? Is that a good shot? You like that one? I should have. Oh, look at that. Hey, do we have the technology or what? All right. Let's pick one to start at. We'll pick this. Get into it. We'll pick this one here to start with. First of all, you go up the shadow line, which is the one that doesn't separate anything from anything. Back it down. Then go up the side of the leaf that you're going to cut out. Cut 
come down to a shadow line, back up, if you make mistakes like I just made there, it's no real big deal because the cuts are so small. You can cover them up. When you're actually doing the final put together. Another shadow line down here. And if you go offline, don't worry about it. The idea is to keep pressure on it though. Okay, first one's just about to come out. Cut it all the way through. I always have my finger behind it for support. That's the first one. I'll just turn it off for a tick. Pop that one out. And where are we? There you go. That's the first one. It can stay there. Now we've got to get this little turnover bit here off. Teardrop, whatever you want to call it. Bring it back in as close as you can. There you go. And that's the reason I, I wanted a zero gap because those little things there, they can fall through. So we just put those there. Move on to the next one. Do your accent line first. Back out of it. And yes, these will cut your skin, but they're nowhere near as dangerous as a bandsaw. Whoop. Way too far on that one. So I might even bring the speed down this a bit.
second one. Come up here and get this little teardrop out. Next one. Hang on, let's have a chat first. Where are we up to? Do you need to tilt them? No, not for this. Um, if I'm doing double-edged uh, marquetry, which I don't know if we'll have time for, but I use a tilt table. This you don't want a tilt table because you actually want the saw cut. So when you are in the process of finishing it, you actually rub a clay behind it and then you get these very fine accent lines that actually come from the saw cut but it gives you that definition if i was doing double edged yeah sure i'd have 13 and a half degrees that way you won't see any join at all but this thing you you've got to see it on the fly production is great thanks for all the extra work. oh speaking of which here you go we'll see if we can get this out for you Stuck on the bottom. It's coming. It's coming. There you go. Where are we go? Close up. There you go, Deb. That's the glue. So all you do now is you put that in water and boil the water up and that's it. The glue is ready to rock and roll. That's, that's why I like pearl glue, because it, it's just got such a long shelf life. Uh, whereas the pre-mixed stuff, I think, does have a, a finite shelf life. So is this scroll saw a motorised coping saw? Yes! He's not using a rail, it should be... <laughs> have you teamed up with Ray, have you, Richard? Hey Steve, what do you think of the new scroll? Mate, I'm, I'm quite, I'm quite liking it. It's, I've got to get used to it. But when you consider, I'll show you the one I was using before, which is about 60 years old, and mate, it's a clunker. And if you, you have a look at the size of that, that one there. Where are we? Yeah, that scroll saw there, which is pretty darn big compared to the one I'm using now. It's just taken a bit of getting used to it. I don't know if this is going to turn on or not. There you go. Oh no, I haven't got a blade in there. But um, yeah, but this is nice. I'm, I'm starting to enjoy it. And once I get a few of these pumped out, this is what I want to do on the um, wood show. As soon as I get these pumped out, I'll be right. So that's number one, and this is number one, and then I can go from there. Ah, ah, later on, good day, LT, how are you? Uh, okay, all right, let's do another one. Get up here with the accent line first. That one? No, it's that one.
Leave that for a tick. I'll be back in a tick. I'll just um, move the bandsaw so you can get a better shot. Oh, actually, yeah, next week. Is it next week? Yeah, next um, Monday. Let me just move this so we can get a bit better. That's better. I should be able to get right around with that. Um, yeah, next Monday I've got the... I don't know if he's a general manager or a head honcho or whatever, but um, Mike Davies of Record. Might be managing director. I don't know. I might be giving you a promotion, Mike. I'm not sure. Anyway, he's um, coming to be on the, the stream next Monday. So he's here from New Zealand uh, for the Wood Show. And he expressed an interest in coming on the stream. So... Special guest next Monday, how special is that? I don't know what we'll be doing, whatever he wants I suppose. Might be doing a bit, actually we're going to do some wood carving, I know that. So that's going to be pretty good. Because I don't think I'll be getting any, I'm going to have to stop this here. I won't be getting any um, wood carving done today I don't think. I think that's that's the trick with this one is whenever I change direction I should stop the saw. On the other one I've got I'm used to it and it's so slow I can spin around whereas this one's giving me a few cuts that I don't really want to have so I might just from now on that's what that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to might take a little bit longer. Doesn't matter, eh? Well, we've got big changes of direction. I'll stop it. This is, this is um, real-time woodwork. It's not your IKEA variety. And you can actually buy these, as I said before, reasonably cheaply, but where's the fun in that? We're getting there, about a third of the way through, I think. Should turn it off, shouldn't I?
I think that's going to be a good habit to get into. <laughs> Now it looks like a pack of poo tickets at the moment, but it's going to look quite nice when it's put together. Anyone keeping count? You don't need one, two, three, well, there you go. I like these short ones, they're good. Oh yeah. Well, that didn't feel very nice. Oh, what was that part? It might have been the bottom breaking out. Which isn't too bad. So do you like the tabletop cam? This is one of those things that you can't sort of just start and say, oh, well, I'll come back later, or here's a shortcut. Oh, I can do, here's one I prepared earlier, because I've got one there I did earlier, but. It would be of no benefit to me as far as practice goes. Whoops, didn't like that. Getting very thin there. I don't know if that one's going to play the game or not. There's a lot of broken bits of veneer floating around, but it's the top layer, the sacrificial layer. So at this stage, there's no need for concern. And that's the reason for the 
paper and holds it all together. Wonder if anyone's still watching me. Oh, I would have given up a long time ago. Yeah, where are we? We've got one, two, three, four, five to go. I'll just cut this bit out and then I'll have a chat. thing I like about this sort of stuff, it's warts and all, so if, if I stuff up, you actually see, you don't get the edited version. Okay. All right, let me have a chat. Uh, g'day, Ray. What have we got up here? Oh, I'm Dr. Crazy. Now you have to peel the blade in the hole. It's easy to get the handle press off. Oh, you can, but yeah, I could do it by hand. I've got the setup for it. In fact, if you wanted to do it by hand, here's what you need. Oh. Deary, deary, dear. One of these. This is the go. This was made by my, my good friend and fellow woodworker, Richard Vaughan. And how that works, much the same. And you've got this wedge here. Oh. You've got a V in there and so you just thread your saw through there and you just cut it this way. So if you wanted to do it by hand, yeah, a fret saw and that, that's not to be confused with a coping saw. I've got a coping saw around here, should be, but anyway. Yeah, so let's see, um, if you want to use it by hand, make yourself one of those little jigs. but. Seeing I'm doing this for record, I have to use the record saw. <clears throat> uh, ambulance, I said, oh, mate, I'll be pretty right with the Band-Aid, I think. <clears throat> His fingers are getting awfully close to the blade, though, of course, we will do tearing damage to skin under like a round. Yeah, look, I could, I, could, I could fix that with a Band-Aid, mate, not with a router. And the camera buttons while your hand is there. Yeah, but I don't make dumb rules up like that. <clears throat> so <laughs> Theo knows what I think about his rules. Oh, good. I, oh, I don't think I will be, but Mike will be. There you go. Uh, the saw has very little speed. Yeah, it does. You can, but I'm not using high speed. Oh, thanks, Ray. Hey, from Chile. Hi, Ivan. Lovely to have you on board. No, nah, the, ants, the ants have got little earmuffs on. They can't hear it. It's a shame the light can't be on even if the saw is off. Why? I don't know. Conserving power. 
No, you're still there. Oh, I'm thrilled. <laughs> yeah, oh, he's, he's gone out in disgust because he didn't get me breakfast. I don't know. I might have a switch on it. I don't know. I could, I could put a light there, I suppose. I could get a, a Bosch light that I've got. Yeah, that's it, mate. I'll tell you what. I've, I've made a few educational challenges in my time. All right. Here we go. See, I'm not even on that line. It doesn't matter. I suppose it's, it's knowing which which ones you should turn off and turn on and which ones you can actually work with. Just a matter of getting used to it, I guess. And a lot of these haven't got no nice smooth curves like I would like but the thing is when when people see the finished design they don't see the one you copied off of so it doesn't matter Of putting this one together, to tell you the truth. Huh? This is the longest demo, and Mr. Herring, I've actually finished something on a stream. So there you go. Well, I haven't yet, but I intend to.
three to go. Oh, yay. Uh, easy ones too, the short ones, I like these. Yeah, I'm a downhill run now. Tell you what I would like, which I've got on... Um, my other ones is a foot pedal. That would be really handy. be good. I might see if I can. Oh, I don't know if I could do it because it's got to go through a something for the um, variable speed. Although, no, I might be able to. I will, I will investigate that when I finish this this afternoon. I'll see if I can rig a foot pedal up to this. 
That would make it far, far easier. Okay. One more to go and then we can put it together. Where are we? Here we go. Last one, here we go, the last little bit here. There, loosen this off. Drop the blade off, take that out. I might, oh no, we'll just move this one. See it being put together. Oh, where do we get up to? Oh, I'll pull that apart in a tick. Uh, I just realised that you will end up with two or three copies of the same. Two, actually. Half, <laughs> half the fun and double the stress. That's what it is, De Tango. The dead man pedal is great. It gives you, yeah, look, I, my other ones, that's what I've got. And, uh, yeah, it's... Makes a huge difference. Anyway, let's get these staples out. And we'll pull it apart. And we'll go at putting it together. something I didn't use my checklist this morning and I didn't do, <laughs> I didn't record any of this huh. 
That's all right. I'll take it off the stream. That's like boring as watching paint dry anyway. Here we go. That's one. And then that's two. That, I've just pressed something, I can't see what I'm looking at now. So that's now waste, but here are the two that we've got, and it's a question of getting these bits now and laying them in and doing them Yeah, I hope I didn't blow something away then, I've just got to work out which one's which now There you go. That one goes in there, which means this one then. Goes in here. And the next one. Uh, we've lost a little bit out of that, so I might have to do some fancy footwork on that one a little bit later on. And the third bit. There. And that bit goes, whoop. That's interesting what happened to that bit. It's just like a giant jigsaw puzzle. Hello, Bob. Did you see fit to bless us with your presence? I obviously moved it around at one stage because all of a sudden these things are out of out of sequence.
And these look great in tables or in the backs of chairs or um, in boxes as I've done with that other one. Got a bit here. That we'll put in there in a tick. I can go in there like so. It goes in the other way actually. That's the way that one goes. On the downhill run now. A bit of damage in that one. Which we can fix up. A bit missing there, but we can fix that up. Now we just got to put the little dot bits in. And don't get too phased out if they get mixed up because they will only fit in one place. Because they're all so unique in their shape. Once you've got it all together, as we nearly have, and then you've got to scorch it. I mean, you could scorch it before you put it, put it together, but I like putting them together first and then I, I know it all fits. And then... Um, and then we burn it. I know I've skipped one. There we go. Three more to go. Tell you what, as far as I'm concerned, it's a great way to spend an hour and a half doing demonstrating, making one of these. Okay. How come I've got Photoshop open? So now you've got that far, what you do is 
you burn the inside edge and the outside edge of the leaf. So you burn this edge and that edge and that's it. These don't get burnt, nothing in the centre gets burnt and then you get that contrast happening. And where I've got bits that are missing, uh, it's just quite easy to fix those up with um, either putty wax or little bits of veneer or when you do your accent lines, you'll find that that'll most likely fill in quite nicely with accent line anyway. So it doesn't even matter too much. Oh, hang on, let me see if I can find the chat room. Where's the chat room gone? There we go. Oh, that was terrible. My Photoshop kicked in halfway through it and I thought, what's going on here? Ah. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, you finish lots of things on stream, just not music stuff. <laughs> ah, memory, mate, memory. I just wrote it. There we go. Has some of the issues of a puzzle jigsaw two missing pieces with little bits missing, ill-fitting pieces, etc. What? Has some of the issues? Of, yeah, no. Look, if if I was doing it properly and not rushing it, you wouldn't have those pieces missing. But as I said. It's no huge drama fixing that. Um, you can either use veneer itself or putty or fill it with Plaster Paris. And if you fill it with Plaster Paris, then put raw linseed oil on it, it'll guarantee it'll fill up and look good. Didn't even lose a piece, no. But there you go. But oh, look, they'll, they'll turn up all right. I'll put those into a box or a screen or montage or something or other. But anyway, we didn't get all that much other stuff done. That was it. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to make another half a dozen of those, I think, on the scroll saw before Friday. To get used to it, I will see if I can fit a, uh, a foot switch to that, which I might have to go around to my electrical mate's place and say, mate, want a foot switch? So if we can do it, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Ah, um, that's it. Can you show the box top again real quick? Real quick? Quick enough? <laughs> Hang on. Here we go. Uh, where are we? There you go. Then the other bit, which I really like... Uh, well, that should be dry by now. Hang on, let me, oh, let me just take this off because I really like the bottom of this. Uh. <laughs> is that part there, which is... That part there, I just love that. It really, I don't know, gives it more depth, I think. Whoops, that's meant to be at the back. That's the front. So there you go. Oh, it's going to be nice when it's finished, but for those of you who've been following us, it really is. It's a comedy of stuff-ups. I did something, it went wrong, so I did something else, it went wrong, so I did something else. And out of mayhem comes beauty. There you go. Um, that's about it. Yeah, that's it. So I will see you next Monday. I just, did you see that? I just, I just, I'll show you. I just hit the, hit me, <laughs> the bench top and all these little bits fell out. So I'm going to have to put them back in. There you go. I nearly lost some of them, Deb. There you go, they're all back in, but no, nah, it's all good. Um, what I will do is cut an oval on that. I'm sorry I didn't get the double double bevel done. I really wanted to do that, but I might even, oh, we might do that next Monday. But don't forget, Mike Davis from Record Power UK is going to be here for the stream. I'm not sure what he wants to do. We might just talk tools or if you've got any questions, I'm sure Mike will be happy to answer. I know he's keen to show you his method of carving, so we might um, do a little bit of that. 
He carves by numbers, I carve by mistakes, so his is most likely more accurate than mine, you never know. So yeah, catch you next time. Looks like it uh, fit a food pedal, you'd have to bypass the on off twist. No, no, the one I've got on there, it goes, um, I get the power through, and then I have the uh, foot pedal getting the main power feed in and then cutting the switch to the on off. So it's switched on all the time, but the foot pedal uh, turns it on and off. I, I will look into that, but if I can get that done, that's going to be awesome. I'm not sure how it'll go with the variable speed, but we'll give it a try. So that's it. In the meantime, Bob, Bob's just had enough. He, look, poor thing. Didn't get his did, didn't get his breakfast this morning, and he's all sad. But that's all right. We'll have breakfast soon as we finish here, and that'll buck him up. So that's it, Steve. In the mean, no fingers were harmed to making this. No, I, I'll tell you what though, you don't cut yourself, but it burns that finger going, the saw blade going up and down the back, my finger pad. Yeah, it gets hot. So this is Steve saying thanks very much for everyone that joined in, put up with what went on. It was a long stream, but it was something I wanted to do. Look forward to having you very, very soon. Thanks for the mods. Thanks for everyone that participated. Thanks for everyone that just watched on the outlines or the outskirts. And if you want, come in and say hi. We don't bite. Everyone's really nice and friendly and helpful. And this is Steve saying, pulling the shed door down. This is Steve, very tired. Pulling the shed door down saying, remember to keep it short, <laughs> keep it short, <laughs> you idiot. Keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe. Look after your business. Oh, I'm going to have a sleep. Look after yourself, be kind to each other. And I look forward to having your company in the workshop at the bench very soon. If you go to the Brizzy Wood Show, look forward to seeing you on the weekend. I'll be there Friday, Saturday, possibly Sunday. I haven't worked it out. And huge stream on Monday, so I hope you can join us for that. Good night, Brian. Good night, Ray. Good night, Tango. Good night, Deb. Good night, uh, Lucas. Good night, LT. Good night, everyone else and anyone I've missed. I'm sorry. Till then, God bless. Be careful. Bye for now.